Good day. Welcome back in our channel and in this video, I will teach you the step-by-step -step process of computing the decrease of freedom of a mechanical manipulator. So let's start. In this example, we have an RRP spherical manipulator. This is a spatial manipulator. So we will use the formula M is equals to 6N minus summation of I equals 1 to M of 6 minus C sub I. We will compute first the number or we will count first the number of joints. So it is M. So this is the first joint. This is the second joint. And this is the third joint. So you will have three joints. Then next we will count the number of moving links. So this is the first link. This is the second link. And this is the third link. So we have three links. Next we will obtain the number of degrees of freedom per joint. So we have here a twisting joint. Which the degrees of freedom is only one. Then next is the revolute joint, which is the which the degrees of freedom is also one. And lastly, the prismatic joint, which the degrees of freedom is also one. Now we have the numbers of number of degrees of freedom for each joint. Now we will obtain the number of constraints. For each joint. So for twisting joint, we have 6 minus 1. For revolute joint, it's also 6 minus 1. And for prismatic joint, we will also have 6 minus 1. Now we have now that we all have our constants for our variables, or we, we already have the values for our variables, let's put them in our formula. So 6 times 3 minus 6 minus 1 plus 6 minus 1 plus 6 minus 1 8 so again 6 times 3 is 18 minus 5 plus 5 plus 5 so the final answer is 18 minus 15 equals 3. Therefore, this is a this is an underactuated spatial manipulator with three degrees of freedom. And that is how you compute the degrees of freedom of a given spatial mechanical manipulator. Or a spatial Serial Mechanical Manipulator In the next example, we have a parallel spatial manipulator This spatial, this uh, parallel manipulator is a spatial manipulator So we will also use the formula M is equals to 6 N minus summation of I equals 1 to M of 6 minus C sub I. So we will count first again the number of joints. So we have here a universal joint which we will uh, multiply to 6 because there are 6 universal joints as well as a prismatic joint which we will also multiply to 6 because we have here 6 prismatic joints. And lastly, we have here a spherical joint, which we will also multiply to 6 because there are 6 spherical joints. Next is we will compute the number of the moving links. Okay, so we have here the first and the second link then we will multiply it to six because we have here six legs okay so two times six then we will add plus one okay so this plus one is from the end effector 
the other factor is the uh, surface of the parallel manipulator or the go manipulator in par in parallel manipulators we add the end effector in our moving links so our moving links is equals to 13 okay next is let's obtain the number of degrees of freedom for each joint our universal joint has two degrees of freedom our prismatic joint has one degree of freedom while the spherical joint has three degrees of freedom This degrees of freedom is from this table as our reference. So, one for evolute, one for prismatic, one for helical or twisting, two for cylindrical, two for universal, and three for spherical. Okay, next. Now, let's uh, proceed in determining the number of constraints for each joint. So, at the universal joint, we have 6 minus 2. At the prismatic joint, we have 6 minus 1. And at the spherical joint, we have 6 minus 3. Now, let's put them in our formula. So, m is equals to 6 times 13. Minus, so the summation of the 6 legs of our parallel spatial manipulator. Sorry, the summation of the joints of our parallel spatial manipulator. Each constraint should be multiplied to 6 because this, uh, this parallel manipulator has 6 legs. To compute this easily, let's uh, factor out 6 from our summation. Okay, so m is equals to 6 times 13 by was 6 times 6 minus 2 plus 6 minus 1 plus 6 minus 3. Then let's simplify it again. And we seek was 6 times 13 minus 6 times 4 plus 5 plus 3. Okay, then let's have factor out 6 to make this uh, computation easy. So 6 times 13 minus 6 times 12 factor out, sorry, it is 12 not 13. Let's factor out 6. So 6 times 13 minus 12. Or 6 times the close open parenthesis 6 of 13 minus 12. Then the final answer is 6. Therefore, this is a this is an ideal spatial manipulator with 6 degrees of freedom. Our last example is a planar manipulator. So this is an, an RPR planar manipulator. Okay, so we will use here the formula m is equals to 3 n minus summation of i equals to 1 to m of 3 minus c i. Let's, let's count the number of joints. So we have a revolute joint, a prismatic joint, and another revolute joint. So we have a total of three joints. Then, number of moving links. So this is the first moving link. This is the second moving link. And this is the third moving link. So n is equal to 3. Then let's uh, uh, obtain the number of degrees of freedom for each joint. So our first joint is a revolute joint. The degrees of freedom of a revolute joint is equals to 1. While the second joint is a prismatic joint, the degrees of freedom is also 
one. So we have we just have two types of uh, joints in this, or two types of joint in this uh, example. So let's go through the number of constraints for each joint. So let's start from the base at uh, the first volute. So it is three minus one. For the prismatic, it's also 3 minus 1, and for the last volute, it's also 3 minus 1. Okay, so let's put them in our formula. So 3 times 3 minus summation of the number of joints. So 3 minus 1 plus 3 minus 1 plus 3 minus 1. Okay, so this computation is quite easy. So 9 minus 2 plus so uh, close open parenthesis of 2 plus 2 plus 2. The final answer is 3. So therefore, this is an ideal planar manipulator with 3 degrees of freedom. And that's all for this video. I hope you learned how to compute the degrees of freedom of mechanical manipulator. So see you in the next video.